It is the last week to get entered to win this truck plus $5,000 cash. And we are offering right now 10 entries instead of one for every $1 spent. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. We highly appreciate it. We couldn't do this without you. Place those orders and best of luck. Somebody's got to take this truck home. Might as well be you. What is happening, guys? Got the Silver Steed here, the old trusty Honda CRV with its first trailer hookup ever thing never had a tow package on i put the tow package on because you know i'm like you know what this could be the new the new tow pig you know now all jokes aside though i thought this tow package would come in handy just in case the wife has her truck which is the only other vehicle we have with a hitch and then if i ever need to use this to run and grab parts and there's not enough room to fit them in the actual vehicle or if i just need to take the mower to mow the lawn at one of our other properties or just take the atv somewhere or if i ever absolutely need a trailer for a light duty job picking up parts or moving small equipment around this thing could do it if we're just running to grab parts or just got to move you know a 600 pound four-wheeler or a 500 pound mower on it it should be fine if you're going at lower speeds 55 or under shouldn't be a big deal and for those of you that might actually want to know how it does with hauling something small like that i'll keep you guys updated what is going on fam something that i'm going to get into with you guys pretty quick here it's not rosine it's actually with this uh tire setup here it has something to do with that yes that is right that is a big crease in the bead there there's another big crease in the bead there there's another big crease in the bead there i thought there's one more spot oh yeah right on the other side there's a big old crease in the bead there so we're gonna go over an issue that uh, i want to discuss with you guys not the most excited about but we'll get it taken care of we are in the honda crv i told you guys i was gonna let it know how to tow this is not like the whole part of this video but I do have the ATV on here. I'm guessing it's between 600, 650, maybe close to 700 pounds. I'm guessing more like 650-ish. It's a Rincon 680. And I've got my 14 foot single axle trailer behind it, which probably weighs, I think I already mentioned it, probably close to 12, 1300 pounds, empty. So far so good. I'm about 10 miles into my trip, just going over to one of my properties here. And uh, the wife's truck, build is still very very fresh in her mind and all new so um the thoughts of me taking that today were just not not going so well with her thought process of taking it over here and getting it dirty so here we are with the honda crv and although this is not technically a towing vehicle it's not really designed for this type of work on the regular type of deal but it, it it does fine i mean it does fine as long as you load your trailer smart it does fine it's not a big deal a big tractor coming down the road here in front of me I feel like i was being judged by that guy he gave me like the dirtiest look when he saw me like the most confusing look i guess not dirtiest but he's just kind of like what are you doing <laughs> we are headed uphill right now actually uphill uphill the guy that was on his bike back there you can see he's pushing his bike uphill um so far so good though it it's doing totally fine i'm kind of i'm kind of shocked i mean even when i put it in drive when i was in the driveway it was rolling just fine you know just with the load behind it i mean it's probably a, the tongue weight of this load the way i have it on the trailer it's probably 300 pounds of tongue weight like actually on the hitch maybe probably not more than that because i could grab the trailer and if i pulled kind of hard i could lift the weight off the the end of the trailer just a little bit to lighten it up so it, it's not like oh my gosh all this weight's on the back of this honda it's actually sitting pretty level right now as long as you're safe and you're careful it'll do the job and i already see the comments you're typing this guy's got a giveaway truck there his wife's truck with a hitch all these heavy duty trucks and he's towing with the honda i get it i got the same crap all the time when we had the escalade which was rated to haul like ten thousand pounds safely if you're if you're loading it safely and people would be like oh my gosh you get you got trucks everywhere and you're using the escalate uh, whatever it's like who cares like if it's got a hitch i'm gonna use it day three of trying to film this video just trying to piece it together as i get the time because i really didn't have it on my schedule to be filming this week because i got so far ahead on my videos and 
we got a lot of other stuff, but I'm trying to get something out for you guys. So we're taking the third gen right now to go get the tune put in on the truck and they're going to tune the truck itself, flash the computer, do whatever else what they do with their wizard, Wizard of Oz tuning stuff. And then they're also gonna be making sure the transmission is properly shifting with the tune and the power that the truck's putting out. And they think that they can get a 180 to 190 horse tune on this truck with what's been done to it. We're gonna verify all that information once we get over there with them today. And I'm not gonna be filming in shop over there just because I don't want to expose who they are and what they do you know because epa is funny about that stuff and even though this is a non-emissions truck it's just one of those things they're busy enough they've already said dude we're busy enough we don't need any more stuff to do you know we're gonna keep it on the dl took the restrictor plate off give the red dragon a little more juice but uh let's keep that on the down low it's not exactly street legal but anyways we're gonna be taking this truck over there when we pick it up in the next video or two probably will be the next video you see after this one this thing's tuned and making some serious power. And now they're gonna have the truck for over a week, but this is the last video I'm filming before Reagan and I go on our trip. And so when we get back is about when you'll see this video and then I'll be picking the truck up already. Let's get in the truck fired up and get on over. We're gonna go grab some Cracker Barrel and let me know, do you guys think Cracker Barrel's overrated or does everybody love Cracker Barrel? I think it's awesome. Anyways, we're gonna go grab some breakfast. And then um, Reagan's gonna follow me up there in Rosine to drop this thing off and get the tune put on. And then I'm gonna talk to you guys about a tire issue that we had with Rosine because it sucked. We were supposed to, this video was supposed to be putting new wheels and tires in Rosine. The actual set that's staying on Rosine and then I get the wheels and tires shop at two of the tires they say are defective and they have issues and you know they're pointing them out and whatever. And, you know, you got some people saying it's not a big deal. These guys don't know what they're talking about. And then you got other guys that are like, no, that's a problem. So I'm just going to ask you guys what you think. I'm going to show you guys these tires before we send them back so you guys can see. Is this a real problem or is this just a minor issue that people don't want to have to deal with because it adds like a little bit of complication to the beating of the tire or the seating of the tire or, or the mounting of the tire to the wheel. Anyways, let's get the truck fired up. And yes, sir. The Rose 24. She's probably like, shift some gears, dude. Get out the way. It's really got me wanting to buy myself another truck because like I'm trying to stay disciplined because I'm trying to save up money for Reagan and I's dream house and not buy myself a truck because I know as soon as I buy one, I'm gonna wanna dump like 10, 15 grand into it between wheels, tires, some horsepower, transmission stuff. And I'm just like, I can't do it. Not yet, not yet. There's a timing for everything and I just need to stick to my plan and hold out until I hit my big goal of saving up the money to buy Reagan and I's dream house. And then I can go buy myself a truck, build the crap out of it, and have a lot of fun. I hope you guys set big goals as well. I mean, some people will be like, oh, well, I can't relate to certain goals that other people have because of my situation. My situation's unique. I can't have big goals because my situation's different than all the other people. You put yourself in your situations just so people realize that you know and and i'll even have um, distant family or friends or whatever that they give themselves all this self-doubt like all these excuses of self-doubt and why they can't do what they want to do and why they don't make as much money as they want to make and and i'm like you realize you're limiting yourself like you're telling yourself i can't do that even though nobody else is saying it to you you're saying it to yourself you know and just realize that you guys can accomplish literally so much more than you realize and pretty much anything you set your mind to and that sounds cliche but it's really not i mean that that really is just true it's like if you want to do something just do it you know as long as you're not harming other people or harming yourself then do it make it happen
That thing is bad. We just left the barrel. It's pretty good. Pretty good like always. So with this truck, we're gonna be doing a single tune on it because this is, I mean, it's a street truck. It's built for street performance. So it's gonna be a single tune. And apparently you can't do like on the fly tunes with an 05. So that's why we're not doing that. But I mean, uh, I'm pretty excited. We're gonna have a CTS monitor up here to monitor everything. sneak peek right there of Rosine's new set. Yep, those are, uh, those are sweet. Let me show you up here. Yeah, check these out. Anyways, those are her uh, 35 by 1250s on some, on some 12 wide wheels. But I wanted to show you something. Some of you guys that we were having a problem with tires. And I took these tires with those wheels back behind that I just showed you too the tire shop and I said, hey, local, I said, hey, I need you guys to mount and balance these. Is he okay? No problem, obviously they can do that. And we get there and then they said, we can't do it to two of them. I said, why not? They said two of them, the tires are defective and the tires are misshaped and the bead won't, the bead won't work, whatever, the bead's bad. So at first I thought, okay, maybe they just don't know what they're talking about. You know, I'm gonna take it to another shop. They said the same thing. They said, oh no, the bead's bad. You're not gonna be able to use them. Or if you do, it's gonna be risky. It might not hold air very long or you know, your bead could come off or whatever. You know, if the tire gets hot, you know, from driving a long time, you know, it could, you know, have an issue. And so this is what they're actually talking about. And then once I had a second opinion and they also said the same thing, I said, okay, well, the, you know, maybe they're right. Maybe they're on or something. Maybe they're, that's true. But the bead is, it is a little bit misshaped. Sorry, the lighting keeps readjusting on you, but yeah, you can see that misshaped. And I put these pieces of wood in between here to try to, you know, straighten out the spots and maybe not have the indentations in them anymore and see if we could somehow fix them without having to send them back. And it's got the same spot down low. So it's got this little like divot here in the bead at the top and then there's an identical one down low same thing here a little divot in the bead there same thing down low and then on this tire same thing little divot here in the bead little swell in the bead same thing directly down below and, you know and my initial thought was okay well that's not a big deal because like you know the rim is going to be seated around this lip up here you know like it's not going to be you know that affected by that little spot down there and they said well if you can probably get it seated then you know it might be fine for a while but if that's an actual defect in the tire manufacturing that could be a problem it might not seem like a big problem but it could become a bigger problem you could have a blowout or whatever i don't understand tire like stuff and expansion and heating up and i don't understand that stuff completely so you know excuse my ignorance on the topic i just don't I don't fully understand and I don't know all the terminology that guys that have worked in that industry forever know, but essentially they're saying the bead is damaged and you can't use the tire because it's got a bad bead. What do you guys think on that? What's your guys' opinions? What's your thoughts? Have you dealt with this? Is there still a way you can use the tire even though that's like that or not? You know, cause I mean the tire is still totally round, but it almost looks like there was maybe like a metal rod coming out on like a shipping truck, right? And they can use it to hang some stuff on, like tires, for example. And almost like they took it and they hung the tire and they hung it up on the rack and it made that little swell in it. And maybe that theory is completely garbage and that's not really what happened, but it kind of looks like it because the way it's indented is top and bottom in the identical spot on both sides of the tire, almost like it was hanging on a metal rod coming off of a, on like a shipping truck, like they had it hanging on a rack. And then the weight of that, you know, however much these weigh, 30 pound tire, 40 pound tire, just hanging on that rack, you know, in a shipping truck, just kind of like bouncing around like that from coming from who knows where, hours and hours away, was just enough to misform the bead on the tire 
and deform the rubber a little bit from hanging like that and it could have that could have been what damaged it i don't know and so you're probably wondering like what the piece of wood like what like what's the point of putting the pieces of wood in there i actually had a buddy said you know to try it maybe and he didn't see the tires themselves in person he i guess maybe he thought that would help he said maybe put some pieces of wood you know make sure they're about 11 ish 12 inches you know and put them in between you know up and down and see if it you know keeps the tire opened up long enough to kind of take a new shape to being like closer to what it needs to be to bead properly you know to seat pro to mount properly to the wheel so i thought oh, i'll try it but i think what the real problem is is this indentation here which you can't fix by just propping the tire up like so and i'm gonna actually take these out and see if it looks any different as much as i would have loved for that to have fixed it you can see that bead is still very warped i mean it it does not look does not look right that's for sure and like I said, it did the same thing top and bottom. So now there's like, there's almost like a, a very faint V shape in the bead of the tire there. And another one up here in the same spot, directly across from each other, like a little V shape in the bead. It's nothing that we did wrong. We got the tires and I saw that when I got them and the guy had just left from dropping them off. And I'm like, hopefully that's not a problem. So I took them to the tire shop and they're like, we can't mount these dude like it's like it's just not gonna work and now maybe you could get some kind of like tire sealant or like there's a stuff called murphy's tire sealant and lubricant and you can like you know put them on mount them to the wheel like you're getting ready to air them up and then you can like put this stuff and it like seals it up you know it's kind of like this paste and it's like considered soap but it's like a paste texture that you can put in between all the little cracks and crevices and then you can slowly fill it up with air and as it'll fill with air it'll expand and you know as soon as it touches the bead and the lip of the wheel it'll just kind of seal and push all this like paste out of the edge or in the cracks where it was getting air you know letting air escape but i don't know if i want to go through that or not so i don't know you guys let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below as of now we're planning on just returning them and having them send us a new set that's not you know going to be a problem for like for sure not going to be a problem but i mean i feel like they can be used hopefully you guys enjoyed this vlog i pieced together over the last three or four days just kind of took some little bits of video this was supposed to be like my off week to work around the place and i was like ah, i still got something i want to talk about though so i'm gonna grab the camera and see what we can do so um but anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed it let me know down in the comment section below what you guys are thinking also keep in mind 10x entries are live to enter to win the white third gen plus five thousand dollars cash so 10x is live right now so i think it's like the last five days to enter to win that truck and then that giveaway is gone 10x is live right now so grab those 10x bonus entries get in while you can that truck plus five thousand dollars cash has got to be going to somebody might as well be you and hopefully for our next video we're picking up that third gen and the thing is a complete ripper so stay tuned guys i will get you in the next video peace